Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and I hope you're all having an amazing and safe day in this honestly crazy kind of time. I swear everyone yesterday was at Ralph's buying water and toilet paper, and I was at Ikea buying dressers and pillowcases. While I'm quarantined at home, I'm going to be DIYing for you guys. So, But besides the point of that, I hope everyone is staying safe and washing their hands and just honestly staying at home more than leaving their house. That's what I'm trying to do at least. But today I thought we would do a fun little DIY dresser upcycle. And I came up with this idea because I was looking through my stash of items. So I don't know if you guys remember, but a while back in a video with me and McKenna, we actually picked this wallpaper up at a thrift store. Oh gosh, what is this? Oh my gosh, there's contact paper too. Look at this. Oh, wait. It kind of looks really pretty. It's like an embossed, super pretty, almost like Parisian style wallpaper. And this has been my stash for a while now. I think this was $5 for the full roll. There's quite a bit on there. So I ended up heading to Ikea to just get a lot of different stuff that I can DIY over the course of the next couple of weeks. And I came across the Tarva dresser, which is the exact one I have back here. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to get the taller version. And we are going to be upcycling the Tarva dresser and making it look so different from the original state. I got new handles and I have so such a fun idea for you guys. I thought this was like vintage or something, but I found this on Amazon. I found a ton of other prints and patterns as well. I'm going to link everything below for you guys in this video, but I honestly want to get started. This video is actually going to be very similar to that Ikea Rattan Kane bookshelf video that I did. Just very blog style, craft with me, create with me, and let's see what we can do. So let's head on into the living room and get started on this project. Here are the two boxes for the dresser and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open these first and pull out all of the drawer fronts because we're actually going to want to work with all of the drawer fronts prior to building the base. So let's go ahead and open these and get those drawer fronts out. Okay, there are a lot of pieces in here. So I'm going to grab the drawer fronts which I believe are these four right here and then I think there's a skinnier one at the top and we're going to work on those. Oh yeah, here are the drawer. So there's a skinny one at top and then there's four larger size drawers. Okay, so jumping right in, I'm going to start off by sanding the front side of each of the drawers. I just want these to have a little bit more grip than how they originally come. They're originally really, really smooth, so I just give it a nice sanding with a heavy grit sandpaper. And what I'm going to next do is lay out my wallpaper, and this is because I want to see how many of the drawer fronts I could actually fit on here. And I'm able to fit two of those full drawer fronts on one laid out sheet which is great but i want to find the center of the pattern that way when i flip it over to the back side and i glue it down i know exactly where this pattern is going to repeat nicely uh, so i'm finding the left and the right side of the center flipping it over to the back side and then using a mod podge to glue down the wallpaper and the reason that i'm doing this is because this is a very strong bond sealer and this is just a really great adhesive or something that's all over so i'm just applying a thick good like generous coat not too anything too crazy just giving it a nice even coat all the way around it's definitely going to turn the wood like a little bit white but that's kind of what you want to look for when you're gluing this down so i went ahead applied my drawer front on and pressed it down and then repeated the process to the next drawer front and just placed the next drawer front directly underneath that way the pattern repeated down to the next drawer cutting off some of that excess wallpaper right there. And then I'm going to actually apply a couple of books on top and let that dry for a little bit. However, I realized I need to cut off the excess pattern at the bottom of the drawers. That way we could line it up for our next drawer set because you're gonna want that pattern to be seamless all the way down. So how I'm doing this is I'm laying out my next set of paper matching up the pattern from where the ending of our last drawers ended and then marking where that's going to start with a couple of lines all the way across and i'm just cutting off that top section that way the pattern's going to repeat all the way down and just look really nice and seamless once all of the drawer fronts are completely dried making sure that I could still fit two of those large drawer fronts on, which I definitely could. And then I'm repeating the process of applying Mod Podge, of flipping it over, and then adding books for weight. Thank you. 
So I have now covered all of the drawers with the wallpaper. These ones are facing up, so I was able to connect the patterns properly. I put a ton of different coffee table books on there. These ones are facing down. Everything is just drying at the moment. So I'm gonna let these dry for probably about an hour or two before moving on to the next step. And while this is drying, I'm actually gonna go ahead and create the base of the dresser uh, because we just need these to dry for a while before moving on. Alrighty guys, so I finished the base off camera. It looks perfect. This is what the base kind of looks like. The next steps are honestly constructing the drawers. We need to finish off what we kind of started here. So as you can see, they have been drying under here for probably almost about two hours. And what I'm gonna do now is actually cut the drawers apart, the ones that are actually connected to the same piece of paper like this one. I'm gonna exacto knife down the center here. Then I'm gonna exacto knife any excess off and then sand away all the excess on the front. And you're gonna see me do that. So let's get started. As you can see, we kind of have a lot of paper shapings here, and that is because on this exact dresser, the drawers have this beveled edge right here, beveled as opposed to just being a perfectly straight drawer, and you can kind of also see it here. So I finished three drawer fronts and they look incredible so far, but as you might be able to see, there is a little gap in between each that is wood, and that is because of the beveled edge that I was mentioning prior. I sanded everything off of the edge, that way it had no opportunity to peel up at all. Um, it's really, really sucked down and solid. The only reason you're really able to tell this is of course because the wood is a different color from the wallpaper. So once we have everything painted, I honestly don't even think you're going to be able to tell that there's like a little seam in between, plus the drawers are going to be spaced anyway so that they're able to be opened and closed. They look amazing and I'm super happy with how they turned out, but I want to share with you guys the hardware that I got for this cabinet because originally it comes with just like the typical um, wooden hardware that the Ikea dresser comes with. The hardware that I ended up picking up are these antique brass cup handles, which I think are going to look so incredible, especially with that color that I chose um, once we paint it all. But prior to painting it, I do want to find all of the holes and all of the placements for these handles. That way when we paint it, we don't have to put any marks over the top of the paint or anything to put these down. Um, and the holes are already going to be set for those. So I'm going to start by putting down all of the handle placements and drilling all of the holes needed, and then we're going to get to painting. So how I'm going to drill the holes for these is I'm going to place my little cup handle on here. And what I did was I went four and a half inches from the edge. So I found four and a half inches. Then I went one and five eighths inches from the bottom. And of course, this is going to vary based off of what you have. And honestly, the cup handles are probably the hardest ones to install just because there are two placements. So if you didn't have cup handles and you just had a normal handle, you can use the pre-drilled hole that it already comes with, which is super easy. But of course, I'm making it more challenging for myself and just doing this cup just because I really like the style of this. And then when I move to the other shelves that are thicker, it's still gonna be four and a half inches from the edge, but I'm gonna have to find that center point. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm literally taking the handle and just pressing it super hard down, which is giving me these little indentations where I'm able to then make my marks for where I need those drill holes to be. A little hack for when you're drilling these drawer fronts. So basically, once you do one of the first ones, you can actually lay it on top of your next one and make sure that it's perfectly aligned. I kind of like even stack mine like this and then put it on top, make sure it's really nicely aligned. And then you can go in with your drill and just go right through the hole you already created and into the next drawer.
ended up getting a quart of the Whitewater Bay Bare Paint, and I ended up getting the Paint and Primer in one interior flat. I didn't want to have any sheen to it at all, so I got the flat one, and the color is so pretty. It's probably not showing up super great on camera here, and I ended up getting the fabric roller as opposed to the foam roller just because I wasn't sure if the foam was going to be too dense going over the texture of the wallpaper, and then I also got this little thingy here to put the paint in, so I'm going to start painting the front of all of the drawer bases, and then we're going to do the sides as well with a paintbrush. All right, so color reveal time. I am obsessed with this color. It's like a super soft green with like a little bit of gray in it as well. I just thought it was a perfect tone for this dresser. So I added a good amount onto the brush because the wallpaper actually kind of eats it up, I swear. And you're just gonna wanna apply even pressure and you're gonna wanna actually apply quite a bit of pressure when painting this because you're gonna wanna get it in all of the little nooks and crannies of the wallpaper because I noticed from different angles and what I do suggest is walking around your finished painted piece at like a 360 to see if there's any angle that you did miss because sometimes you actually see things that you wouldn't have seen prior. And I'm just giving this one full coating of paint and I think I mentioned a couple times that I'm going to give it two coats but I actually ended up only giving it one because this paint was pretty full coverage which was amazing. All right, so got the first coat of paint on all of these and it looks incredible. I'm so happy with the color. Um, and now I transferred the little dresser over to this piece of cardboard here because I'm gonna be painting the entire outside of this as well. Okay guys, this is what my living room looks like at the moment, but I have completely given one coat of paint to the exterior of this dresser here. Of course, I also added one complete coat to the drawers, and I also went in with that paintbrush right there that you guys can see and did all of the edges of the drawers as well, and I did all of the edges of like everything on here, so everything is nice and fully coated, and it's getting pretty late here, so I think instead of me trying to rush it today, I'm going to give myself all day tomorrow as well to maybe give this a second coat, put on all the drawer fronts, construct all the actual drawers and get this together so I will see you guys in the morning I just went ahead and added all of the handles to the front of the drawers and it looks amazing. I'm very happy that everything kind of lined up and it looks perfect. But now we're gonna get to actually constructing these drawers and putting them in the dresser base. finishes off this upcycled wallpaper embossed faux wood looking dresser. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I am completely obsessed with the outcome of this dresser. I think it looks literally stunning. This texture is amazing. The handles pair so nicely. Like it's just such a nice contrast and the colors are just so pretty together. I really think that they're a nice almost like eclectic tone with each other which is really fun. And keep in mind you can customize this for your space. So you can do this on a nightstand. You can do it on a dresser. Anything that's kind of like a raw wood material and all also, you can customize the color of it to match whatever you want to do. I was even thinking like an ombre one, like where it went from white to like a super light blue, a little bit of a darker, all the way down to the bottom could be really cool. Um, there's lots of options with this, but 
Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And also I hope everyone is being super, super safe out there. Um, and I'm wishing everyone and sending positive vibes because I feel like we definitely need positive energy right now. So I will be responding to comments because I'm going to be at home for a while. So leave whatever comments you have in the comment section below and I'll get back to you guys and have a little discussion down there. Let me know what your thoughts are on the dresser. And yeah, I think that's about all. I'll catch you guys all in my next video. Have an amazing rest of your day. Stay safe and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.